Now, this is the history of monetary collapse in Zimbabwe pre-independence 1965 to 1980. Prior to gaining independence from British colonial rule in 1980, Zimbabwe, then known as Rhodesia, experienced moderate inflation influenced by factors such as economic sanctions, political instability, and the Rhodesian Bush War. Then, early independence 1980 to 1990. Following the independence, Zimbabwe initially experienced relatively stable economic growth under the leadership of President Robert Mugabe. However, inflation would begin to rise in the late 1980s as we begin to see the signs of corruption emerging in the Zimbabwe government. Now, 1990, ESAP, Zimbabwe launches a five-year economic structural adjustment policy. ESAP, it is said to be substantially financed by the World Bank, International Monetary Fund, and the Western donor country. What did come as a surprise was the rapidity with which the program undermined the relative stability of Zimbabwe's social economy. Zimbabwe's adjustment program contained the usual collection of bank-inspired reforms, trade and currency deregulations, devaluation of the Zimbabwean dollar, movement towards high real interest rates, the lifting of price controls, chopping of social spending, and the removal of consumer subsidies. 1992. Isa plus drought. We see in Zimbabwe now. We used to think we begin eating Sazare Kenya. 1993. Now, as early as 1993, the country experiences its first riots when the lifting of subsidies and decontrol of market prices sent the market price of bread soaring 30 percent and there was a bread boycott by townships township consumers lasted more than two weeks and saw running street battles between the riot police and women and the youth but though the standard price of bread only dropped temporarily, but the creeping power of the market would soon catch up. Now these days, the women and the children were the ones who were doing toy toy marodum. Now, 1995, there is another drought in Zimbabwe, but not as bad as the 1992 drought. Then we see the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Union launching a major economic policy statement beyond ISAP. They're criticizing Mugabe's government adoption of the Economic Structural Adjustment Program, the ESAP, which involved the introduction of neoliberal macroeconomic policies at the encouragement of the World Bank, the IMF, and other Western donors. Now, Morgan Changirai is the Secretary General of the ZCTU, and earlier on, the ZCTU would have been formed and established by the ruling party ZANU PF, kept into the year 1996. In the year 1996, the price of bread is now nearly double what it was two years ago. Imagine those days. It took two years for a price to double. Two years, 95, 96. Now the price of bread is double. We're seeing light protests here. People are just protesting lightly. These again are the negative effects of the ESAP. Imagine these days people protested just for bread. Now we are so used to the abnormal normal and it's seemingly crazy to protest bread prices. 1997, war veterans led by Chenjirai Wonji staged protests against the government pressing the state to pay them $50,000 each payment of the gratuities which had not been included in the country's budget. This led to dramatic crash in the value of the Zimbabwean dollar and economic downturn. This is where we see the beginning of printing money. We need money. Print more money. We need more money. Print more money. We need money. Print more money, right? Up to the next year, 1998, where we see Zimbabwean involvement in the DRC war. It had a significant negative impact on the country's economy. Now, at one incident, as claimed, hardware losses multiplied. Then, Western donors placed their aid programs to Harare under review, denying Mugabe the foreign currency he needed to buy spare parts valued at a little more than half a billion, that is $600 million, for fighting vehicles then employed in the Congo between January and June 2000. It is reported that Zimbabwe spent at least $166 million on its military 
ventures in DRC. And this information was leaked that time by a certain minister. Now, 1999, the ZCTU becomes the main force behind the formation of the opposition party. Now we see the movement for democratic change is established in 1999. Then, the secretary general of the ZCTU, Morgan Changirai, becomes the president of the MDC. From ZCTU, he had gained prominence, favor in the eyes of men, the work he had done representing the worker. So everybody loved Morgan Changrai. And by the time the MDC was launched, Morgan Changrai already had a supporter best. He is the man we had seen standing up to Mugabe even before the war veterans had claimed their fifty thousand dollars. Now the year is 2000. The Zimbabwe government seized the land from white farmers and redistributed it to the blacks. Many records refer to these resettled people as farmers, but not most of them were farmers. Most of them didn't actually go there to farm. Some went to build homes. Someone went to build their Misha Maruzevaro, right? That was an instance where we saw looting also we would see irrigation equipment being looted. That's where we got introduced to the idea of scrap metal. Irrigation pipes would be ripped off and sold to scrap metal dealers. Kushigrama pharmacists as you know. Then, by the passage of time, we see now some Zimbabweans now getting interested in farming. Then we see the farm mechanization program. We see the indigenization. It almost succeeded. It succeeded a bit, but something happened. Now, the banking sector is unable to mobilize funds for investments and loans because of political looting by societal elites and government officials. Banks are also unwilling to loan money because of the increased risk due to political and monetary uncertainty. As a result, capital development and economic output sharply declines and unemployment peaks at 80% during the inflation crisis. We are coming from the year 2000 and we are building up to more chaos that's going to come later. In addition now, the government keeps on printing more money. More money. We printed more money financing DRC. Printed more money for the war vets. Printed more money. We want to ramp up food imports, right? We are creating trade deficit in printing more money. Now, this all becomes a catalyst for hyperinflation as Zimbabwe finds itself in greater debt, denominated in foreign currency. On top of this, no attempt was made by the Mugabe regime to curtail other forms of government spending. The explosion in volume of currency in circulation due to money printing causes rapid increase in prices. The severity of the hyperinflation in Zimbabwe was also due to institutional corruption. While printing currency to finance military efforts and food imports, the Zimbabwe government underreported its money printing activities by over $20 million a month. In an effort to correct the falling value of the Zimbabwe's currency, the Reserve Bank simply increased its money printing efforts and declared inflation illegal. All right, guys, printing more money is causing, causing inflation. Let's just top the inflation by printing more money more more money now we see now the denomination of the currency five dollars ten dollars bills now we have 100 million 200 million bills and then the government intentionally avoids updating foreign exchange rates or inflation rates and announce the new currency regimes that did not address the underlying causes and further reduced the citizens' confidence in the stability of the currency. The redenomination went so as far as $1 trillion. We saw now $1 trillion being injected into circulation. This made the Zim dollar virtually worthless, forcing people to butter goods or use foreign currencies for transactions. As a result, we now see money changers, the black market for foreign currencies beginning to emerge. It's now a common method of obtaining basic goods at a consistent value despite the foreign currency being illegal at that time. Through that period, we will see many monies being introduced in Zimbabwe. The bond note, the agro based the check, the what what check, the days of Gideon Gono. We see Gono now being the man. Remember, in the year 2000, 2001, 2002, we had had Juntan Moyo. Juntan Moyo coming with Aipa and Posa. Now, these were the days of Gideon Gono. Of course, he would introduce RBZ, Homelink, Zimbabwe's first remittance service. But the days of Gideon Gono, I Remember speculation those days. If anybody wanted some money, go and see Gideon Gono. Go to Gono's office. He will sort you out. Gono was the king. So Gono would deny anybody who didn't want to give money money. Then, economic reform in Zimbabwe now. 
2008. As inflation hit all-time highs in the late 2008, the Zimbabwean government began to institute several reforms. Firstly, they adapted foreign currencies, including the US dollar and the euro as official currencies, which allowed them to stabilize the prices, exchange rates, and rebuild confidence of the people. Secondly, in 2009, now we have a GNU. The government stops printing money and people are allowed to use the foreign currency of their choice. US dollar rand puller. Then consumer confidence is restored as a result Inflation fell consistently for many years, hitting 4.3% in July 2018. That's a period of almost 10 years. Then, although a certain finance minister in 2015 had stated that we are not going to reintroduce uh, the national currency, then 2019 we see a new national currency. But first, we see the gold coins made of real gold. Then, we see the Zig Mari coming into 2024 right now where we are. So right now, the Zig is very scarce. Is the scarcity a strategy on its own or oh, the notes do not exist they exist only in computers but the physical money does not exist now we are seeing crackdowns on money changers that is very good we are seeing crackdowns and i think crackdowns should be happening in all the sectors in zimbabwe especially the sectors that fuel much economic instability in zimbabwe money changers are not primary they're just secondary issues so this is where we've come zimbabwe all the way back from the year 1990 where we had isap to the year 2000 10 years later where we see money being printed to the year 2020 now zimbabwe just recovering now the question is what happens now and what happens next